Hello, and welcome to the August 2022 Astrological Overview on the Alchemist Inkwell YouTube channel. My name is Crystal Lynn. I'm a professional astrologer. Astrology is my love language. And if you found your way here from the Alchemist Inkwell YouTube or podcast, fantastic. So great to see you. If you found your way here from the at the real link real crystal in my own name at the real crystal in TikTok. Great to see you as well. This is where we're going to dive a lot deeper into the astrology of August. And you can still get the skits, the planet skits for every transit that will be coming up on the TikTok and the little tidbits, as well as horoscopes and everything like that on TikTok and Instagram at the real crystal in here. We're going to go through the whole month and talk about the general astrology, transit for transit. And I did something extra cool this month to make it even more appealing, even easier. And I'm hoping even a little bit more efficient as we're coming into Virgo season next month. I'm really focused on efficiency. That is the uh, mid heaven sign for me anyway. So I really like to refine things and make them more efficient. And I think we've got a good technique here. So I'm actually going to start by showing it to you. What you can expect is I will be showing you the transits on the screen. And I'm going to try to move the screen over to the actual chart for the lunations, the full moon and the new moon, and for Virgo season, so I can guide you around the chart a little bit more intimately and interactively with that. But regardless, you will see the chart. It's just a matter of how deep I can get with the functions that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing the best part of this. So bear with me as I get this started. to make sure this goes the right way. And okay, so I am now going to share my screen here and it should work. Ta-da, wonderful. So with any luck, you are now seeing the astrological overview for August, 2022. So this is going to be a PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to make this presentation available for download through a link that you'll see in the description, and I'll be emailing them monthly as well. So you will always have these to keep and use for your own reference. So we're going to dive into August. And the first thing that I want to be sure that I focus on for you is getting this to actually move. There we go. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is when the lunations and the change of seasons occur. This is my favorite slide simply because it is your go-to for the things that you're probably going to be the most interested in, aside from any ingresses, which we will be experiencing this month, and I will be talking about as we progress through the video. So our first full moon will be on the 11th of August at 9.35 p.m. Eastern time. Be sure to adjust that for your time if the time is important for you for any rituals or techniques or magic kind of thing that you might be working on intentions wise or elsewise. Otherwise, elsewise, I like elsewise. So that will be on August 11th. On August 22nd, we will move into Virgo season. The sun will officially move into Virgo at 11.17 p.m. Eastern time. And then on the 27th, we will have that new moon in Virgo at 4.16 a.m. Eastern time. Diving into the first week of August, the first through, I don't know why I have the 24th there. It should just be the fourth. So I will update that before I send it out to you guys. What we are looking at is on the first, we do have Mars conjunct the North Node and Uranus. This is something you heard me talking about at the end of July as well, because it really does move a little bit slowly thanks to Uranus kind of sitting on the North Node. Mars now joins Uranus. So what we're experiencing here is rapid surprises. Uh, could be generally supportive, but possibly destabilizing stabilizing. And I say this because it's on the North Node. The North Node vigorously takes things in. It is the, the mouth of the dragon, the head of the dragon. It's what we're taking in. So that's going to be exaggerated, possibly something to the extreme. And we've already been seeing tidbits of this in the world. I specifically think that this is going to show up in natural events, like we've been seeing where Mars, fire, Uranus, instability, surprise, or suddenness show up in that Taurian nature uh, context. So what we've been seeing is earthquakes, volcano eruptions, heat waves, wildfires, these kinds of things happening on a global or collective level, which is the context or this sphere that or that Uranus sort of moves in Mars bringing it into the reality where we can actually see and experience it. 
So it's a good indicator of what we're moving toward by way of the resources and the sustaining systems, medical education, financial that are around us. So one of the ways that you can use this is by saying, what is abundant around me? What resources are there for me to use and how can I apply them and just follow that little breadcrumb trail towards what is being created on my path? Then on the second, we have Venus offering a sextile aspect to Uranus and Mars, and Venus is overcoming in this situation. So Venus is a little bit of ahead of, ahead of them and has a little bit of an upper hand, and it is a sextile. It would be a little bit more positive if, if it were a trine, but it is still a trine or a, a supportive aspect. So what we're looking at here is Venus sort of offering an opportunity to take this energy in Taurus, which Venus is the ruler of, and just saying, hey, let's apply this in a constructive way or in a way that's going to lean into allowing these things to work and nurture. Venus at this point is in Cancer. So by triplicity, Venus is doing all right and just does pretty well in nocturnal signs. And so what we're experiencing with this is Venus saying, hey, I'm going to soften this a little bit. I'm going to make this something that we can now gain perspective on and integrate a little bit more so that we can catch ourselves and feel a little, a little bit safer, a little bit more Cancerian in this, sort of integrate it into what feels comfortable. And then on the fourth, Mercury goes into Virgo. So Mercury is not only the ruler of Virgo, but Mercury is exalted in Virgo. This is a unique situation in, in the Zodiac. So what we're seeing is Mercury going into Virgo, which is creating this very personal because Mercury is a quick mover. It's very personal and close to earth. So we feel more efficient, more productive, more like we want to get stuff cleaned out. Maybe you want to go around your house and prepare it for fall. That kind of energy is coming in. I bet you we start seeing more pumpkin spice commercials around this time as people jones up towards the um, harvest kind of feeling and vibe that might come from this and especially increases when the sun also comes into Virgo. Another thing to be aware of is because we're moving so fast and trying to do a lot at once, that's efficiency. But on the other side of that can be stress or anxiety. So I encourage you to really allow yourself to feel grounded, remembering that Virgo is mutable. So it likes to sample things. It likes to go from one thing to another and get a lot of things done, but it's also earth. So it's important to allow yourself to be practical, to give yourself the time that you need to do what you want to do at the same time. Okay. And I just moved us backwards. There we go. All right. So moving into the next week, the fifth through the 11th, no typos on this slide. We have a week that I'm dubbing divine healing and rebirth. So on the seventh, we see Venus trine Neptune, which is retrograde at this point and Mars square Saturn, which is also retrograde at this point. And around this time, uh, Saturn is also kind of in the middle part of its retrograde. So we're halfway there before Saturn turns direct again, I believe in October. So what we're doing with this uh, trine between Venus and Neptune and Mars and square Mars square Saturn is there's an ease in the continuation of things that began on April 27th with the Venus Neptune cycle. This was generally associated with peace efforts and also with inflation. Remember Neptune and especially Neptune in Pisces, that's a lot about blurring the boundaries of things. But conversely, we do have the Mars square Saturn coming in and saying, hey, hard and fast, we need some boundaries here. So it's going to be a little bit of an interesting energy where Venus is like on vacation <laughs> and Mars and Saturn with Mars overcoming Saturn is saying, yeah, but we need to move on some structures. We need to get some progress made here where it hasn't been made before. So what you might see with these two things coming together is that the Venus Neptune really gives us ideals and idealizes the situation. And then Mars gives us the energy squaring Saturn. It could be a little bit um, conflicting and contentious, but it gives us the energy to really work on the things that need to be worked on. Saturn really bringing in the need for something that needs to be worked on that will likely become more recognizable to us at this point. Now, remembering, that Neptune is very transpersonal, affects the whole world because it's so far out there, Saturn being a little bit more social. So we may see this in our own feelings and our own personal actions or in just the headlines. And we observe them and reflect on how they make us feel and what they make us want to do in our personal lives. So this is something I would, I would 
assume that we will be also seeing reflected in headlines and on a global scale, but it is something that also becomes a little bit more personal thanks to Venus and Mars interacting there. Then on the 9th, Venus will perfect an opposition with Pluto, also retrograde, and has been for a while. Pluto will be the first of the outer planets to come out of retrograde later in this month. So what we'll be experiencing through this is working through your own relationship or even money value limiting beliefs. Certain things that you don't like to feel may come up for this. And it's because it's time to really reflect on those, the opposition being able to see directly at something and saying, yeah, I see you. And now this tension between us, we need to resolve it. So this is an, an excellent time for releasing limiting beliefs around relationships, around money blocks, or uh, any kind of traumatic incidents that have been really coming up for you lately. This is a great day for healing. And remember that Venus also allows for comfort. So don't do anything that is too extreme out of your comfort zone, even though Pluto is involved. Just make sure that you are doing what is right for you, what is best for you, and what allows you to have a fresh start and transform into a more actualized version of yourself. On the 11th, then we have our first full moon in Aquarius. So some brief things to talk about here before we dive into the chart is we are taking on this higher perspective, a higher view of situations. Aquarius really likes the top down. I can see everything. I'm the strategist by being separate from everything situation. So we're strategizing after a new information that we've received over the last few days. This has been a busy month already. So there's a lot that we may be even reeling from, whether it's an excited reeling or a, wow, that happened kind of situation. This is a time that we will be calculating our next steps and even possibly taking some calculated risks just because of situations that are going on. So I am going to try to do something tricky here and whoop, there we go. So this is the chart itself. And I think we're going to stick with this because I can show it pretty well. It shows up better than I expected it did. So what we're looking at here is the full moon in Aquarius is happening between the fifth house here. You can see the sun in Leo and the moon up here conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. And that is mutual application as well. The moon is moving towards Saturn as much as Saturn is moving towards the moon. So what we see here is exactly kind of what we were talking about before, where we're looking at this divine healing and rebirth kind of week that we're in. And now we have this full moon for releasing any kind of limitations on us that we felt maybe we're wounding our pride, thinking about how uh, the sun is still in Leo at this point, the sun rules Leo. So there's this situation of the sun being opposite Saturn, being opposite the moon, which is conjunct Saturn, and just really looking at the things that limit us from being able to feel good about ourselves and releasing those. So this is a time to think about what holds me back from expressing myself my, in my most authentic sense? What holds me back from just showing how passionate I am from this? And how can I release that? Another thing, taking everything else into consideration at this point, and I do want to refer really quickly to my more specific notes. We do still have the sun square Uranus. So you can see the sun down here is square to Uranus and Taurus, as well as with Mars. That is actually forming a T-square between the sun um, and Uranus and Saturn. So we have this situation going on where a lot of uh, contention is happening and we're not really sure what's going to happen next because Uranus is over here being a little bit unpredictable as Uranus tends to do. Saturn would like things to be predictable and it's feeling very personal to us with the moon being there. And we really want to move on with what we feel is the right thing to do. So this is an excellent opportunity to start cooperating with other people, get out of your own head and realize that whatever does come up, how uncertain it might feel, you are prepared for anything that is yours. And that's really important. So I recommend taking a beat to assess your situation, then refocusing your goals and making sure that your actions are still goal oriented and not too scattered. So we want to use that organization of Saturn and say, hey, this is where my emotions at my, my moon is right next to Saturn. I feel like organizing and strategizing. So I'm going to take all these scattered puzzle pieces and try to make sense of them at least to get my border going so I can make the next best step. And then we move into the next week of the 12th through the 18th, which is, of course, dubbed moving forward as we are now moving ahead into the middle of the month. So at this point, the sun opposes Saturn 
in perfection. So we are at the exact middle of Saturn's retrograde now, and Mars will try and Pluto retrograde. So what we're seeing is we're reviewing what isn't fair and what is fair for us, thinking in the line of progress and defining what that line is for us based on what we know it isn't. So it's like when you think about, I know what I don't want. So that helps me understand a little bit better about what I know I do want. And that's something really to take into consideration. How does what you've discovered is not aligned with you show you more of what is aligned with you? And how can you move towards the things that are still there for you to work with, even if it's by process of elimination? Then on the 16th, we'll be experiencing Mercury trine Uranus. These are two... Um, interesting planets, both associated with surprises in their own ways. And Mercury being in Virgo at this point is kind of interesting to me because Mercury wants to be a little bit more organized at this point. Mercury tends to towards a little bit more nervous energy in this way. Again, we have that earth really rooting us into things and saying, I, I would like a little bit more control. And Uranus saying, yeah, what is control? I would rather be uncontrolled, unstable. I want the surprise. How can we revolutionize this system? So there's a lot of progress towards personal projects. In fact, very quick progress. Something may come up that just leaps you forward like lightning, which is absolutely cool, right? And because this is such a um, neurological, or there's a better word for it, but I, I don't want to spend time looking for it. Merc Mercury is very, um, I want to say cranial. It's very much of the mind and of the thinking process, especially in Virgo. And Uranus is like the genius of the Zodiac. So you have Mercury trine Uranus and this really easy aspect that allows for sparks of inspiration, an aha moment, your Eureka sort of moment. So this is a great time to be open to the possibilities and see how how they might, how the events around you really launch you forward towards what's right for you. And then we think about on the 18th, Venus trine Jupiter, which at this point is also retrograde since the new moon in Leo back on July 28th. So we have this trine between the benefits, which is kind of nice. It's overall a good day for self-expression, self-expansion, and just really feeling great and allowing yourself that heart opening experience of just being in um, all of that loving fire energy, which is wonderful as well. So at this point, Venus um, will have come into Leo at, as well. So we have this Leo Venus energy, just really wanting to have that lioness kind of feeling to it. And the, the pride and kingly energy of Jupiter over in Aries, even though it is retrograde, it's really allowing yourself to feel that divine fiery feminine you've got going on. And that is that is applicable across the board. However, you want to apply this um, luxurious kind of I'm really happy with who I am and I don't need to be broadcasting it. It just sort of glows through me kind of energy is totally appropriate for this. So like I say, use this energy to enjoy yourself and just have a little bit of fun. Moving into the next week, we have probably the big busiest week, and it is actually the second to last week of August already. I told you this was more efficient. So what we're looking at here is setting the stages. Mars coming into Gemini at this point, giving us uh, driven toward communication, ideas around spontaneity. Again, Mars coming into Gemini. This is going to be a long stay. As you can see, um, Mars will be in Gemini until March 25th, 2023. And this is because Mars is going to retrograde while in Gemini. And it's going to spend a long time there. So Mars is now in Gemini and will be here for a while. The retrograde itself does not happen until next month. And I will cover that more in depth then. But being aware that starting around, I believe, I'm going to make sure I get that correct, um, in the next notes. So I don't want to get ahead of myself on this one without going into it enough. So um, what we want to think about is things that are happening now are probably going to be happening very quickly for a while. And then when Mars retrogrades, those processes might slow down and we may feel frustrated with the lack of progress. But just understand that between October and January, those things will get revisited. And so if something happens really quickly, it may be happening a little bit hastily and you'll have the opportunity to make sure it gets resolved and done correctly. I highly recommend looking at what house in your chart Gemini rules, because that's going to be getting a lot of attention. And of course, cardinal signs uh, are going to be 
uh, experiencing some situations around this as well. I I've also believe mutable signs are the ones I really want to look at with this. So mutable signs like Gemini, like Virgo, like Sagittarius, and like um, my last mutable sign of Pisces. This is going to be in opposition and in square for you. So be aware that if you have a prominent again, Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, or Sagittarius in your chart, you may be feeling this as it is angular to you a little bit more than usual. So this is something that may actually make itself known in your life. Otherwise, it may be something that kind of goes by and you don't acknowledge or notice too prominently. So that's kind of one of the ways that you can see whether a retrograde is going to impact you or whether you're going to feel the effects of it more directly. Also, we have um, Saturn and Pluto ingress around the time that Mars does. So there's going to be in March 2023, a lot of um, movement of things kind of changing and turning pages, moving on to new chapters. So that's something to really anticipate and lean into and get curious about. On the 21st, we have Mercury opposite Neptune. And so Mercury being cerebral, which is the word I was looking for before, Mercury being cerebral in Virgo, really getting into the detail oriented things and Neptune being slow and kind of like the sloth in Zootopia. So really taking its time, not really focused on the details, wanting to see the big picture and just observe and embrace the beauty of the cosmos. We have a possibility for confusion and miscommunication, possibly because maybe our Mercury sides are trying to control things a little bit too much, getting too much into the details, and we need to zoom out and understand the bigger picture in order to be able to function most effectively and efficiently. So this is like, uh, I say, speaking without sensing because it's very much like your um your opposing energies are i want to say this i want to do this but the tension is i need to get that bigger picture in order to understand my message more fully and completely so if you find that you are jumbled up over your words or you're blanking on words today this day it's totally okay you're right on track just give yourself the opportunity to check in with yourself and say okay how am i actually feeling what am i actually thinking around this and how do i want to express that that rather than just convey. This is about expression, sharing the feeling, sharing the experience of it, maybe not as much as dictating. So that's a great way to look at it as well. On the 22nd, we have Virgo season and Mercury trining Pluto at this point. And we're going to look at the Virgo chart in the next slide. So Virgo season, I like to say the devil's in the details because this is a situation with Mercury now trying Pluto, bringing in that transformative energy to all the things going on in Virgo. Now the sun is also in Virgo. We have, uh, it's kind of a really great time for body checks, spiritual tune-ups, rage against the machine, because we do have Pluto saying, hey, we're, uh, we're doing some transformation here. It's like saying we're doing science, but we're actually doing spiritual transformation. So think about the areas of your life that are smoothly, because this is a trine, that are smoothly transforming and becoming something that you see it differently. Like when you see through something and understand the matrix behind it or the way something works, looking at the cogs and understanding how that makes a clock. That is something that you may start really getting into. And that really punctuates this Virgo season as well. On the 24th, Uranus will station, station retrograde. So all the things that have been changing rapidly uh, since May 7th, 2022 will be revisited, not all the way until May, May 9th. It actually will station direct I believe in uh, January as well. And so that post retrograde season for Uranus will be uh, January 23rd when it stations direct through May 9th. So from May 7th to August 24th, we went through a lot of changes. I think we can agree on that. Those changes will now get refined, revisited, and just tuned up so that between January 23rd and May 9th, they will get locked in, ready to go, fully ready to support us as we begin to allow more change to come into our lives, because that is the cyclical nature of the way the world works. And it's kind of awesome if you ask me. All right. And then on the 25th, we have Mercury going into Libra. 
Libra, the scales, thinking about that, you have the, the equality between two things. People like to say Libra isn't the scales themselves. It's the thing that keeps them balanced. So if you think about the, the person in between allowing for compromise, compromise, allowing for mediation, creating fairness in the situation that's going on, it's how can this also be equal to this and balance them out. That doesn't mean that Everything that one person gets is exactly what another person gets. It has to be a fair situation. So understanding that Libra really likes true justice, really likes truth, really likes authenticity and people being allowed to express themselves just as much as another person is allowed to express themselves. And for all you Libras out there, that includes you. So with Mercury coming in there, that's going to be the nature of our conversations. We're having these discussions about what does fair look like for each individual and how can we create that environment for everyone. So now we can dive in a little bit more deeply to Virgo season. And the affirmation I have for this is I build my character and values day by day, choice by choice. And that to me is quite important because this is that time of transformation. This is that trine with Mercury and Pluto. And Mercury, again, is very strong in this chart. Now Mercury is domicile in chariot because the sun has come into the same sign, but also exalted. So Mercury has a lot of influence going on in this uh, in this environment. And especially as we talk next about the new moon in Virgo, that's very mercurial as well, because Mercury is going to be there and the dispositor of both the sun and the moon. So we're going to be feeling a lot of Virgo Mercury energy in that. Um, just looking at anything extra that we've got going on here. Um try and Pluto, we're doing pretty well. And then Mercury also at this point um, is quite opposite, you'll notice, to Neptune, as we had mentioned before. So that is still in play in a bit of the energy going on. So make sure that you are allowing yourself to take a breath and get the bigger picture as you are working on the little steps and getting into the minutia, which is fun, but it's always important to remember there's a really great story when I was working at Disney World. They talked about when they were painting the Haunted Mansion and they had this great color for the roof of the Haunted Mansion that they used and they thought it was gonna be perfect. They painted the whole thing. And when you stepped back, it actually just made the whole roof of the Haunted Mansion look like a bubblegum pink. So understanding the bigger picture would have helped them understand the quality of the color that would have best served all of the other colors and complemented all of the other colors to create what we now see when you look at the Haunted Mansion in Disney World. So a little extra fun fact for you there. Then we come into the last days of August, and that is August 27th. We have that new moon in Virgo, which we'll look at the chart for next. Venus will square Uranus, and the sun will square Mars. So there are some possible outbursts here and plot twists in relationships or even the justice systems. Thinking about uh, this new moon in Virgo. So the moon is here creating a new cycle that we will be able to watch unfold over the next six and then 12 months to see how this really goes. But Venus square Uranus is saying, hey, there's an issue here. We need to address it. And by the way, that's my sign you're messing up, <laughs> as you see happen a lot in the skits, while the sun is squaring Mars. So the sun square Mars, which is now in uh, Gemini, is really just saying, hey, there's some communication. There's some thinking that we need to do about this. And we need to make sure that all of this is the right way before we just dive in and get a little bit too carried away with our energy and our exuberance with this. So for the new moon in Virgo, like I said, we're going to dive into that a little bit more in depth on the next uh, slide. Because the very following day to wrap up the month, Venus will oppose Saturn. So this is going to bring some tension and restriction to relationships. Saturn, again, liking restrictions and boundaries. Venus, not so much wanting to just have that joy of um, relationships and things like that, especially with Venus at this point being in Leo, really wanting to be in the right, really wanting to be in the pilot seat so that she can make her own decisions in that aspect. So what we're looking at is... Um, before this has happened with uh, the conjunction between Saturn and Venus was on March 28th. There was a suspension of funds or taxes to ease pressure on people who were feeling uh, the pressure uh, pressure of financial situations regarding the uh, 
things that are ever evolving over in Europe with Russia. And on the 18th of June, that opening uh, square happened. So now we're at the opposition. So we had that opening square, which also was marked by a stock market drop and certain things surrounding Bitcoin, very Aquarius Saturn going on there as well. So you can think about how finances may be a theme that show up for this the next time as well. That might be what the theme of the story is here. So looking at the Virgo new moon, a recommended affirmation is I pursue both sides of a situation and act with alignment with my own truth. So that's really important. Uh, Aquarius is another sign that really appreciates authenticity and really showing who you actually are and not really holding things too close to your chest, not to mention Venus being in Leo, wanting to be that full expression of ourselves. So I recommend assessing before speaking or acting brashly in this. Remember, we do have that square between the sun and Mars that you can see, and it's a sun and moon square Mars partile because Mars is on the fourth degree and they are very close within three degree minutes of that square. So get curious and ask questions. This is both because Mars is in Gemini and also because Saturn is in the curious sign as well, um, air sign of Aquarius. So it's really important to make educated decisions, getting curious, asking questions, finding the answers to those questions, and then continuing on with an educated decision based on your ethics, based on what's important to you and what you now understand so that you can research your personal values with Venus there as well. And just say, okay, based on who I am, what is true to me and what I know to be true from understanding the context of this situation, here's what I'm going to do next. Here's what I'm going to create moving forward. So that's very helpful and interesting. And I'm intrigued to see what comes up from this because it is a Virgo new moon all the same. So it's a really building blocks kind of situation where we want to be able to get a lot more out of this and make it run more smoothly. So these questions may help us make something far more efficient than it was, and it may make it more supportive than it was before as well. And with that, we come to the end of the slideshow. I'm going to touch up a few things that I did notice throughout this, and it will be made available through a link in the caption of this video. And through there, you will also be able to sign up to receive the slideshow for free every month, access to all previous slideshows, things like that. This is the first of this, of this nature, but you will have access to that database. So I hope that this worked out really well for you. I hope it's more uh, effective. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. It was shorter for sure, which I really like. Again, that Virgo season, making things more efficient and even more aesthetic as Venus is coming into Leo and we've got all of these other things going on. Mercury will be moving into uh, Libra. So hopefully this reflects a new beginning that is much more effective and functional for all of us. I appreciate you being here. If you want to continue interacting, I'm of course on TikTok at The Real Crystalline, and I have my amazing Alchemist Inkwell episodes with Emily, who is at Liker of Words on TikTok and Instagram. We do uh, weekly episodes on The Alchemist Inkwell where we dive into the astrology and what's actually happening into the world and how you can make that feel and be consciously even more magical magical every day. So I hope to see you there. Thank you so much and have an excellent month. Happy birth month and solar return to all you Virgo sons out there.